one, another episode of Faith in Home Buying, equipping people of faith for the home buying process. Uh, my name is Tamika Ellsworth, but my friends call me T. Um, I'm going to be doing something a little different today. I'm going to be answering some questions um, from some of my favorite, uh, I wouldn't say, I'd say all of you guys are my favorite though, but it's like some favorite questions um, that have been asked um, over the the course of a year um, and it's going to be kind of a fun kind of a get to know me uh, sort of and maybe questions that you've probably been wanting to ask yourself so so stay tuned for that but first and foremost I, I wanted to speak on um, oh kind of this is a great scripture that one of my clients they had just uh, closed on their home and it was amazing testimony amazing story and he did a great and uh, just a beautiful blog post um, on it and if you're ever on Instagram remember you can hit me up on at Tamika Ellsworth uh, T-A-M-I-K-A Ellsworth um, on um, Instagram but the story is on there and he has a great blog post and I have a give, given a little snippet of it. But in the end, um, it was just an amazing um, time of being able to not only celebrate them getting into their home, but the process that they took to get there. And it's just an amazing story. And I would really <clears throat> recommend you um, going and see it. So it's the story of Albert and Noel. But the, the, the verse that really um, kind of like for, for me uh, really touched me and in, 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 kind of, you know, I see my life as being this and I, and I, I hope I can give hope to someone else's life. And no matter the little, the small things, the big things that you're doing, um, here's a verse that could hopefully keep, um, could stick with you. Um, it's first Peter for, uh, starting about eight, um, be generous. And this is the message version. Um, be generous with the different things God gave you passing them around. So all get in on it. If words, let it be God's words. If help, let it be God's hearty help. That way, God's bright presence will be evident in everything through Jesus. And he'll get all of the credit as the one mighty in everything. Encores to the end of time. Oh, yes. Uh, you know, and <clears throat> just, just in the thoughts of this particular um, verse and, you know, what I do just in business. And um, I hope, you know, for the, over the two years that people have been listening, um, you know, that the little bit that you have, God could do a lot with. And, you know, even though things sometimes come to an end or you switch cheese seasons and transitions and change, um, just know that the very thing and the very gift that you have um, doesn't, it isn't by, you know, by chance. Uh, you know, in the people person that you are, um, the ability to love on people, to give people um, uh, insight, knowledge, you know, uh, you know the, the ability to even speak, to talk um, so eloquently, to write down words uh, so wonderfully, to, you know, I wouldn't even say it's with, with sales, but to be able to be trustworthy and integrous, you know, all of those things um, do give way to what God has created you for. And so never think that, you know, it's by accident. And I love this verse too, because this is a, every, everything, everything giving God glory um, in it. And, you know, and, and, and I, I choose to do that. I choose to, in, in my business, um, you know, call a miracle what a miracle is. And I tell people all the time that I'm good, but I'm not that good. Uh, you know, there's certain things that, you know, I love giving over to the era of mystery and not all the time do we have the right uh, words to put into place for something that has happened. We can't logically think it out all the time. And that's okay too. And that's what one of my client, well, the last client that I had worked with, uh, Albert, and it's so interesting because his logical mind as it was happening was like, huh? You know, uh, on, you know, how can, you know, with like one offer, this is Walnut Creek. Like, you know, we got one, one offer came in on this home. Uh, and this is the first house that they offered on. <laughs> it, it, it was a house that they didn't even think that they would have been able to be in reach for, uh, but we did it. And wouldn't you believe the only offer? And, you know, later on, we find out that the person that actually, you know, did the flip on the home and was building the home lives in the area. Um, but he was building the home specifically for someone to come in for it to be their dream um, house to do enough that they would find peace, they would find tranquility, they would find everything that my clients did when they first walked into the house for the open house. I mean, that stuff is not happenstance. We ended up meeting the seller and finding out this story. Um, but 
it's a beautiful thing to know um, just in life that um, no matter no matter what, um, from the small things to the big things, even the stuff that you've been through in your life that seemingly shaped who you are as a person, um, all of those things uh, can be used um, not only to glorify God, but can be used to um, further help other people. And when you're generous with it and you don't hoard it to yourself, um, how beautiful it is that we can share our gifts with the world and edify and encourage people. So I encourage you, uh, you know, on this day that you would find someone to encourage and use your gifts um, as small as you think that they are. They might be big to someone else. Uh, so yes, um, so let's get on to some questions. Um, it looks like uh, the studio has some questions that I'm going to be answering and uh, I hope you like this format. Uh, it's a little different for me, but um, yeah, I think it would be a fun. <laughs> All right, so your first question is from Shana. Shana lives in Walnut Creek. She wants right. to know, you know, with the way that the Bay Area housing market has become, you know, you're paying a million, million five per house. Even if you're mm -hmm. making $100,000 a year, that's still a lot of money, you know, you're paying per month for your, your house payment. So she wants to know, you know, how do you find ways to make that work when, you know, this housing market is so crazy? Yeah, no, great question. Uh, and it's a popular question. And you know my my past clients and even current clients as we're currently look are looking right now they know that I am the kind of person I'm the kind of agent that thinks outside the box. Um, the thing that a lot of people have going for them, and specifically in this generation, is that they can save money quick. They make a lot of money, um, you know, in comparison to a lot of um, people in in the past. At least my clients, especially the millennial kind of generation. So a lot of them, it's not like they can't make the payment. It's just, they don't have the money down. You know, most people don't have parents that have trusts or, you know, that they can, you know, send money to it in order to help for a down payment. So because of that, you have to get creative, right? And so a lot of the creativity comes with, you know, not with the old thinking of 20% down. It comes with, okay, having to do 18%, maybe 15%, 10%, 5%, you know, maybe even 3%, you know, to stay conventional, stay in that 30 year fix and still all be um, appropriate with price point. Um, that's really, really important. Um, another way is, you know, they've had a lot of places um, that now offer um, just down payment assistance. Um, and believe it or not, you know, in the $100,000 range, uh, you can absolutely qualify for down payment uh, assistance in certain areas. Um, and most people don't know that. Uh, most people don't know that you can also get lender credit uh, for your down um, payment and that can go towards your closing costs that will reduce the amount of money that you have down. Um, not only that, you know, there are unique ways that you can buy down your rates. Um, you know, when rates continue to rise and they just recently went up another point. Um, so that could be the difference of about $300 for some people. Um, however, there's money that you can spend up front in order to buy down that rate so that it's a little bit more palatable um, as you have your, your mortgage payment. Um, so, you know, there are many ways to skin a cat. It's just, you know, when clients come to me, a lot of times their, their options have been exhausted just because maybe the agent doesn't know other programs of know of other ways in which it can work. But I tell you this, if I can get teachers into um, homes, uh, if I can get pastors into homes, if I can get those with marginalized, you know, incomes uh, into homes, vets into homes, um, I can get anyone to a home. So the next question is from Julie. Julie lives in Oakland and she wants right. to know, you know, obviously like there there's, there's advantages to owning a house, but when it's so easy to rent a home, you know, what would you say as a real estate agent is the most important, you know, aspect of, of why you should own instead of rent? Yeah, um, another great question. Um, I could get that one all the time, uh, too. And, you know, I can just take it from just, just the facts of what people say. You know, a, a lot of times it's being able to have something to call my own. Um, and, you know, I, I look at it more in the personal um, stance in the in the actual physical um, stance, as far as payments are concerned, you'd be surprised. Um, again, like I had mentioned before, millennials, they they're paying six thousand, ten thousand in, 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 in rent and not getting anything in return from it. Um, you know, a lot of times people look at, uh, you know, 
home ownership or they look at assets, right? They look at, you know, stocks, crypto, but allow the, the child is changing it. People are looking at real estate and actually they can afford it, but looking at it as an asset, somewhere to park my money um, so that I can gain a greater return. And you have to figure the last several years, you know, we've had maybe about a 7%, 7 to 14% increase. Where can you park your money and have that increase in the matter of a year or so? In the last two years, you've had 21%, 24% uh, um, you know, equity increase. So that has absolutely blown you know, people's thoughts on um, home ownership out the water. It is still the single most um, uh, tried and true way in order to continue to increase your money and build generational wealth. So in the, in, in the sense of uh, building wealth and in a sense of um, having something to call you know, your own, and especially if you have um, you know, options, it is one of the best options. And you know, truth be told, you're gonna pay somebody else's mortgage. Well, you're, you're paying them to gain their wealth. Why not do something so that you can gain your wealth? And a lot of people don't talk about that a lot. They don't talk about pass down the generation, even if you don't want kids, you know, who's to say a spouse or someone else that you come into contact with. Who's to say that, you know, maybe this is the first time in their generational line that they're doing things. So yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely something I feel that is um, important, not only just for your, your, your current state, uh, but for the future state of your life. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, yeah, rents are, rents are expensive. <laughs> it's more expensive to rent than it is to own nowadays. And so, uh, so we'll, when we come back, um, the second half, we'll have some more uh, questions. And so I really do appreciate it. Again, this is Tamika Ellsworth, uh, a faith in home buying, equipping people of faith of the home buying process. We're in question mode back with another episode of Faith in Home Buying, equipping people of faith for the home buying process. Y'all know my friends call me T, but hey, also to remember, you can contact me. I've had um, a great conversation with a, a class client the other uh, day looking for home ownership, but uh, remember, I can be reached at 408-561-7922. Again, that's 408-561-7922. 7922. Make sure you hit me up. I have so many amazing things on TikTok, real estate underscore T at TikTok. And then also on Instagram, hey, you know, I'm your girl at Tamika Ellsworth. You can find me there. So I've switched it up a little bit, you know, talk a little bit about First Peter um, 8 and message, um, you know, about using your gifts. And uh, today um, I'm going to talk more about, um, not talk more, but answer more questions uh, with regards to real estate. These are some questions that uh, clients are well, some, some more clients, but um, viewers and listeners have had over the past year. And I'm excited to answer questions. So here we go. All right. So this next question is from Whitney in Pleasanton. She wants to know, you know, a lot of real estate agents, you know, they seem to have integrity when you first, you know, meet them and such. But, you know, what have you done or what kind of things have you tried to show to, to show you have more integrity than, you know, some real estate agents who are just in it for the money? Yeah, um, I, I love that question. And, you know, one of the things I stand by, and maybe it's because I'm a Leo, uh, I don't know, is integrity. Uh, um, and I say that um, to not to not to brag, but I say that because for, for me, um, even how I got into this industry, it was not money based. And, and actually, truth be told, anyone that comes to me and asks for mentorship, the first question, one of the first questions I ask them, why real estate? Um, because that will tell me a lot about their motivation and looking at people like numbers or as a, you know, a, a you know, a, a race or, you know, just competition wise. And I, I don't do that. I've never done that. And the reason why um, I feel that my approach and the way that I approach people and the way that I approach this industry is truly because I want to see people in homes. Um, hook or crook. Uh, matter of fact, I had a great conversation with some clients of mine and I will you know, take the time to go over the, um, the offer, the strategy. You know, I'm not going to send a DocuSign just so that you just just, just look it over and ask questions later, you know, um, we will go over it, we'll go over the strategy, we'll go over the disclosures, and you can ask the hard questions. Why? 
is so wet when in this crazy market, this uber competitive market, there are no stones left unturned. You're going to know what's going to happen. These are the pause. These are the pitfalls. This is what's going to happen. And whether that means that you uh, uh, say no to wanting to do it because you don't feel comfortable, well, then you don't feel comfortable. We move on to something else. You know, um, I, I, I'm of the mindset that I'd rather for me to lose out on a particular um, deal and transaction. Because remember, we don't get paid <laughs> unless something closes, right? But I'd rather for us to lose out on something that someone's not comfortable with than to proceed forward and knowing that they had doubts and they get into this home and they feel sick to their stomach about it. I can't live with it like that. I just can't do it. Um, so many times um, I've known, been known to even talk myself out of a deal because I know that number one, the home or whatever we're looking at, it's just, it's not advantageous to the client and they're going to end up suffering in it. And I'll say it, or the workmanship is shoddy and I'll say it, you know, just because of my background in, in carpentry, not that I'm a professional in it, but certain things that I will see. And of course, uh, you know, do it appropriately, you know, I, so you know, I think motivation is a huge factor when speaking to agents and even interviewing, interview more than one, see what other people are saying, shoot, get references, no joke. This is a team effort. Um, and so you should know the integrity. You should know the background about who that you, who you're dealing with. And hopefully they're the same people on camera as they are in person. That's another thing too. People can do a lot of hiding on camera, or at least they try, um, or on the radio and kind of what their knowledge and their information is. But ultimately, um, there are a lot of people that are snakes. I came into this industry because, you know, people had said that, you know, agents, real estate agents are on the same level as used car salesmen. And I thought that was bogus. I was like, oh, no. Oh, no, no. We're, we're going to change that because that's not me and that never has been me. So, yeah, I hope that answers the question. <laughs> Integrity is a huge thing with me. <laughs> so this is a, a question from Elena in Concord. She wants to know, basically, she has a townhome right now, but she's pregnant and she's about to have kids. And, mm -hmm. you know, obviously her, her income isn't necessarily going up, but she wants to have a bigger home, you know, for her upcoming family. So what kind of advice would you like to give her, you know, ways to upgrade to a house when she isn't making more money necessarily? Excellent question. Uh, actually, there are what's called below market rate homes. Um, and as a matter of fact, I just uh, spoke to someone, especially in your, 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 your city. So like Melpitas, for instance, they have a deadline to fill out an application. You got to get a pre-approval, you know, letter. So whatever you're approved for. But the beautiful thing about uh, below market rate homes and specifically for families that, um, uh, you know, you, you make decent money, not a lot, but you're, you're at a medium um, um, point of the, of the, of the income level in certain areas. So what it is, is there's like, if you have four people, you know, there's a certain cutoff that you would have to make. So a hundred thousand for like four people inside of a household or like, you know, uh, for six people in a household, the cutoff is you know, 140,000 or whatever it may be inside that area, it all depends. And so these are actually opportunities that are beautiful opportunities, a lot of paperwork, but some great opportunities for people to get into homes in areas that are beautiful, high expensive, but they get in at a fraction of the price and builders are required in pretty much all areas uh, to have a certain percentage of homes that they leave on the side for below market rate homes. Um, the only thing about it is, you know, as far as building equity, you can, but it's a little different on how that's built and how that, you know, each program is pretty much the same, but it's not like you're going to get that big equity increase out of it, but you'll be able to live inside of an area that you've been wanting to uh, with your family. So yeah, they, they do have those type of programs. There are wait lists to those um, in, in some areas, but not a lot of them uh, in, in certain areas because they're just not, they're, they're not explored upon. So yeah, uh, Pleasanton was, is a popular one too. They have a lot of BMR um, homes uh, in Pleasanton, Dublin, uh, you know, Walnut Creek, San Ramon, uh, Milpitas, Fremont. Yeah. So I feel like this is a question that gets asked a lot, but because um, it showed up a couple times on these lists. This is Bridget in Livermore. She wants to know, is there a reason my home's assessed value differs compared to the market value? Uh, oh yeah. So the assessed value is... It, it, for, uh, I'm assuming this is for um, like when you see like the property, they assess, the assess value on their 
that's more for your improvements, like the land and improvements. I believe I'm answering the right question, but land and improvements. So the assessor comes in and assesses the property. Like say, for instance, when you first buy a home, um, they assess the property, they assess the uh, improvements that you've done on the land and in the property, and they come with a number. Um, believe it or not, they send you this and you actually have a certain amount of time to dispute it if you don't believe the assessed value, not, the, not what you paid for it, but the assessed value uh, is um, uh, inaccurate. Um, so say for instance, uh, maybe they said that you had a pool in, the, in your um, area and some way, somehow a permit for a pool was um, pulled. So your assessed value is obviously gonna be a lot higher because you've done improvements on the land and you come in and you say wait a minute I don't have a pool here and you can dispute it uh, and say no I don't have a pool so can you bring down the assessed value because that in turn um, is indicative of how high your taxes are going to be so assessed value is just the assessor land and the improvement that's why you pull permits like when you pull permits and they say you have to pull permits to do a kitchen uh, remodel or roof remodel they're tracking the amount of money uh, so that they can tax you for it uh, and that's why some people get in trouble if they do not pull permits. So assessed value is, is, is not the same as your purchase price. So it will always be lower. Um, but you know, again, that's just more dealing with the, the, the area and your land and improvements. So in this question, I, you kind of answered it a little bit. This is uh, Chloe in mm -hmm. uh, San Ramon. She wants to know, you know, I've decided I'm done renting she doesn't want to rent anymore. She wants to buy. What are some of the first steps she should do before even getting a real estate agent? Yeah, you know, um, I think take a good hard look at the areas. Now, now, okay, again, it depends on the lens, right? A lot of my clients come in kind of in the faith aspect and, you know, not believing even that they can actually do it. So obviously the first lens I would have someone coming to me in that light is pray and ask God where you need to be. But just honestly, like, where do you need to be? Where do I need to be planted? Where do I need to be a light? Where do I need to be a light to my community? I think that's a big, a big question to ask yourself. And even if you're a couple, that would be number one. Number two would be, um, again, researching uh, real estate agents. I wouldn't even say going to um, the lending first, and I say that too, because in this market, it's uber competitive. It's very, very like for, for me, I know I have trusted lenders that are out there. And so for me, I'd rather go to an agent first because I know I'm going to be working with the agent, but the agents usually have lenders that they work hand in hand with and that your team can be solid. And so that would be number two, going to the real estate agent and then three, going to the lender and getting your paperwork together. Um, that's going to be important. So if you are, um, you know, looking at, you know, starting your process, definitely get your paperwork together because that's going to come down the line, like kind of like nine, number three or four, but definitely get your paperwork together, your, your W-2 forms, your uh, uh, bank statements, you know, any asset information that you have, um, you know, definitely like your taxes. If, you know, if you haven't got your taxes done, you know, those are going to be important um, things and that will help speed up your process to get your pre-approval. There's a difference in pre-qualification and pre-approval. Pre-qualification just takes what you say and they go with what you say, but not verifying the information. Pre-approval verifies the information and allows you uh, to uh, go in and uh, you know go uh, and shop and, and hunt knowing that your stuff has been checked and your credit being checked too. Final question is from Vera out in Brentwood. She wants to know, you know, your show is called Faith and Home Buying. Yes. What is, you know, what to you is someone who sells houses while, you know, giving faith in God and Jesus Christ and our Lord and Savior? Yeah, no, it's the lens. Um, I look at every person that I plant. Um, and when God gave me the mandate to plant his kingdom, um, I took that seriously. I used to be a builder, I used to be a contractor. And I said, God, I'm going to build your house differently this time. And I'm going to plant people in communities and in um, areas that will help them flourish and be light. You know, when you are planted in, a, in an area, you are light, you are responsible to be the salt of the earth. And so I take that seriously. And I believe that everything that I do, uh, giving honor to God, uh, that it is something that is increasing and doing something better in communities and better in people's lives. And so, yeah, I, 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 I do believe that um, the miracles can happen. Thank you, everyone. This is Tamika Ellsworth, Faith in Home Buying, equipping people of faith for the home buying process.